A very good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. You're very welcome to the second leg of the Autumn Webcast series, where we aim to bring you insights, practical tips, and inspiration to help you advance your digital change. My name is Renee Boertje from Adobe, and in today's webcast, we'll welcome our strategic partner, Multiminds, and our customer, Coolright, with whom we'll discuss optimization and activation in a multi-branded retail, and the practical steps that Coolright took to build a strong data foundation within the organization. But first, while I have some people joining, some housekeeping rules and instructions for this 100% live webinar to make sure that you get the most value out of it. This webinar is expected to end at 10.45. Use the chat to share your thoughts. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the Q&A pod and uh, we'll try to answer all of them at the end of the webcast. So let me introduce you to today's speakers. We have David de Kegel, Head of Digital Analytics and Team Manager BI at Coolright, Tiger Dirks, Managing Partner and Co-Founder of Multiminds, and Patrick Dausma, Data and Platform Specialist from Adobe. So let's get started. I want to give the floor to my colleague Patrick Dausma, and I hope you'll enjoy this webcast. Yeah, so thank you, Renee. Um, I'll uh, take only a couple of minutes just to set the stage for uh, David um, uh, later on to present his uh, case together with Sigurd. And, and let me give you some trends and challenges, challenges that we face nowadays with uh, digital channel analytics. And to get started, um, we all know that uh, the consumer nowadays is uh, connected uh, through multiple uh, devices. And so they have multiple touch points with your brands. And in these touch points they have with your brands, they actually expect a very good experience across all these touch points. Which, which puts a lot of pressure on marketeers nowadays. And with these touch points, we also see uh, data explosions. So a lot of information coming from behavioral data um, and also from CRM data or point of field uh, type of data. Uh, and so a lot of information flowing into your, uh, into your organization. And the digital disruption as we see it nowadays, actually as we all turned into Zombies, as I like to call myself nowadays, um, and it's also pushed the, the 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 digital transformation to the to the next level. And with this market situation that we have uh, currently, has become um, a situation where we see a fragmented view of of your customers. Huh? So all these data points uh, are are siloed, and actually these fragmented view of your customers makes it really hard and challenging to get a full picture of the customer journey of your clients. And if we look at these um, uh, journeys, there are some key trends that shape these, these, the digital analytics market and also the broader BI market. So first off, what we see is an increase in concerns for data privacy. Now we all know that uh, Browsers nowadays have been more and more prominent in blocking third-party cookies, and Chrome is also uh, planning to, uh, 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 yeah, to stop the usage of third-party cookies. Uh, and for instance, what we also see is that Apple has introduced with iOS 14 the ability to actually uh, 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 prevent you from sharing your device identif identifier. Um, but not only that, it's also concerns around GDPR, e-privacy, any other governmental regulations that we see. Uh, next to that, a trend is we see that our new channels uh, evolving. So not only uh, our mobile and uh, your, your, your web uh, channel as an interaction channel, but also connected cars, voice, uh, a refrigerator that is able to order milk um, and so on, or your, your watch device. Then the third one is that we see a trend is that uh, Clients are investing heavily in centralizing all these data sets together to create insights. So we've seen a trend where, uh, the, uh, where, uh, where organizations are building up their, uh, their data lakes and their data warehousing and also investing in CDPs, for instance, to be able to stitch those identif uh, identifiers together. Uh, and so there's also investment in, for instance, data science tooling on top of these data sets. And the last trends we've seen uh, across our clients is augmented analytics. And this is more the ability for non-data scientists to be able to use data science in their day-to-day -day analytics routine 
um, and giving them more ability to uh, to run their uh, data preparation, giving them some more uh, uh, some more insights um, and to use the data. So these trends actually shape three key challenges we see in understanding and building this complete customer view and custom around their customer journey. First, insights in democratization uh, with, with, I, with ROI, meaning to say that um, what the ability to actually sh uh, share your data within your organization with business users and having them being able to actually use the insights for actionability um, what we've seen is that dashboards generally don't give the right insights to actually really uh, allow for uh, quick business decisioning. And advanced users, um, uh, sorry, uh, advanced insights are only available to a certain amount of people. So data science is actually only available to the data scientists, for instance. Then we see that journeys span multiple channels, and this is what I highlighted before. Um, it's still difficult to, to stitch offline and online data together and really bring those data sets together. But not only that, I think on top of that, uh, the ownership of these data sets and the actionability of these data sets is also still siloed. So the data is siloed, plus the, the actionability and the ownership of these data sets are siloed. And then last but not least, and I think this is uh, uh, explained earlier as well, is data science is hard to unlock. What we see is that uh, data science scientists running their models actually take a lot of time and the time to value is therefore longer uh, to be able to, uh, to action upon that data. Right, so the problem with that is still not having a complete customer view, still a data siloed set. Uh, so you, your, your data is still siloed and the actionability and really the optimization out of this data set is still, uh, is still a struggle. And this brings me to the Adobe Analytics vision and how we view Adobe Analytics in this market situation. And we view Adobe Analytics as the core system of intelligence, being able to really bring the data into the enterprise to understand and optimize customer interactions across any of these touch points. So across any of the uh, customer journeys in real time and at massive scale. So if you look at our primary product, product objectives from Adobe Analytics is first instant and merge cross-channel customer data in really interactive views. So really bringing all the data sets together and have workspace be able to analyze that data. Then secondly, additional. So non-analyst personas can really understand and act upon the insights. So really democratize the data within your organization to run uh, uh, more meaningful insights. Thirdly, enhance insights with machine learning and artificial intelligence. And this is really bringing data science into the tool and really allowing what we call citizen uh, data analysts to have the ability to use data science in Adobe Analytics. Um, and finally, obviously the most important point is really being able to use these data sets and points of action for personalization. And with that very short introduction, I would like to give it to, uh, to David and Siegert who explain how they use their data sets within Callout Group to optimize and activate. Thank you, Patrick. And welcome everybody. Good morning. Um, first of all, we'll uh, we'll um, give some some introduction on uh, and set the scope a bit of uh, of Colrad Group as a as a multi-branded retailer, and then we'll take you through kind of the history of different steps that uh, David's team and uh, Multiminds took to become um, yeah an analytics leader today. Uh, but as you will see, it took uh, it took a couple of steps before uh, we got where we are today. Good morning, all, and uh, thank you for attending this one. Um, first of all, a little disclaimer. Uh, Stigert will be controlling this presentation, so if you see me waving my hands, it's uh, just me signing him uh, to switch to the next one. So I'm David. I'm uh, working at Colorado Group for now for almost 15 years. Um, I started 
working in one of the stores uh, evolved to the digital uh, part as a marketeer and then fell in love with uh, all the digital data surrounding our uh, company. So, um, Colorad Group, um, we are a retailer. Um, we are uh, a group consisting uh, of different brands. Uh, most of you might know the most popular one, and that's Colorad uh, Laagste Prijzen, Colorad Lowest Prices. Um, there's a lot of other uh, brands in the company. In example, Collect and Go, uh, you order your groceries online, you pick them up offline, uh, Dreamland, one of the toy stores. Uh, and also uh, more unknown ones, uh, we also uh, do fuel stations with That's24 and even have our own printing company called Cimeta. So as you might have noticed, it's a family of brands consisting of different users, different uh, types of customers. So it's really important for us to work as a, a, a team around all these different brands. Uh, so um, yeah, how are we built up in the company? Um, so uh, Colorad Group, uh, in the outer rim of this sphere, you will see our different brands, all working as a separate entity in the company. And my team is part of the core. Uh, you see the middle sphere in, in this uh, uh, graphic, and we are part of a, a corporate operating unit. So this means that the digital analytics team and all the data teams at Colorado Group service these different brands. All separate teams, but with a single mindset in the company, and that's really important. If we do something, we do it for the, the whole group of brands in our company. But this was quite a challenge, and in the following slides, we'll give you a view of um, how it all started at Colorado Group, uh, and how we evolved step by step uh, in the company to, to come to the point we are now, and even how we look into data in, in the future. So it all started in 2012. Um, the company uh, had some different uh, free analytics tools uh, running around. Uh, some of you might know this uh, specific tool. It was free, it was nice. We started uh, the digital analytics, or as it was called then, the web analytics department. And I was one of the first people joining there and uh, installing this tool on the different websites. It took some time to um, go to the different brands and teach them what hidden gems were inside this data because they were used to, to old school data, offline data, but this digital stuff was quite new. We, we focused on um, marketing, where is the user coming from, what is he doing on your website, um, and what can you do with this, this kind of insight as a, as a marketeer. So yeah, that were the first steps in the company. Um, I have to admit there was a lot of talking and then uh, giving examples to them um, just to teach them to work with this kind of stuff. So the first part was exactly evangelizing digital analytics or web analytics um, and uh, also finding the right KPIs uh, in this kind of data. It took around two years to get everybody on board. And um, that's the first um, major step we took was how do we want to evolve this kind of service in our company? We had an idea of stuff we wanted to do, uh, of how we would like to evolve. Um, but the major question was, do we have enough C-level engagement? Um, do we have the right technology to do this? What types of data are we using? We had a gut feeling. but we learned about the maturity audit. So as data people, we were uh, taking uh, the right decision to just do an audit in the company, interviewing different types of people, different roles in the company, marketeers, C-level, my team, uh, just to get an idea of where are we lacking and are we evolving in the correct way. And this maturity audit 
uh, will be explained by uh, Sigurd now how we took it on and uh, how it all started and we took the decisions for the coming years. So Sigurd, back to you. So uh, we started this audit in, uh, in 2014 and that's exactly when also Multiminds uh, was founded and actually Coldrunch Group was a uh, was, uh, client of ours since, uh, since day one. But uh, but this maturity audit is, is quite crucial, and we uh, we apply it in every new project that we uh, that we start. Uh, and definitely at at Colorado Group, with this complex environment of of multiple brands, different departments, a uh, huge retailer, it was really important to get an as is view on the on the current situation. And and already then uh, there was a clear strategy of of, of customer centricity, uh, creating better customer experience more offline than at that stage online, but at least that strategy was uh, was clear. So uh, it was also crucial to outline a clear data strategy that uh, that could support this digital strategy and, and the transformation that also Colorado Group was uh, was uh, was undergoing. So it's um, through this data uh, maturity assessment, it's um, we created an, a detailed as is uh, picture of the uh, of the situation and, and discovering. Uh, the strengths, uh, the weaknesses, opportunities, and, and challenges to, related to uh, to the data strategy, um, and at the end, based on this outcome, uh, the goal is to create a roadmap um, towards to the to, to be strategy um, that we uh, that we aim. So this assessment covers both strategic and operational aspects. It's uh, it's based on on six pillars that you see. Here on the on the screen, and in my opinion, it's it's really the foundation to become a, a data-driven or insight-driven organization. So the six pillars are uh, our strategy. Uh, today, it's important that your data strategy uh, is in line with your with your business strategy, with your digital uh, strategy. Uh, it will explain how data will add value to your marketing and uh, and and consist of clear business and uh, and marketing uh, objectives. Um, the culture aspect, it's, it's a lot of the time underestimated, but it's really crucial. Eh? And it, it's, it's how an organization embeds this data-driven approach uh, and this cu customer centricity in a day-to-day -day, uh, workflow, how it is embedded in the day-to-day -day, uh, processes of your organization. Data sources and processing, it's, it's obviously about the data that you, uh, that you collect. It's about the execution. Um, of of the the data um, and processes about connecting data to different sources it's it's about getting out of these silos and uh, and create more opportunities with your different data sources um, their technology obviously it's it's more like an enabler uh, and, and when you do it right uh, the technology really can help you uh, create an, 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 a faster environment uh, it creates a, a convenience uh, and we see today there's Plenty of technologies available every day. There's a new technology, and it's also about selecting the, the right uh, technology for your uh, challenges. Data and insights, it's, it's quite obvious. We, we collect a lot of data. We try to connect them. Um, and actually, we don't want to be a data-driven company, but we want to create an insight-driven company. It's, it's a lot about information. Uh, back then, now it's about insights. It's about being predictive uh, as well and it's about having an impact on your performance it's about optimization uh, but everything that we mentioned before it's not uh, possible without the right skills uh, we see that the skills aspect is is becoming more and more important um, skills need to be uh, also embedded within the company and the uh, the department it, it cannot be centralized anymore but um Everybody needs to understand the value of data and being able to work with the data in order to create these insights, in order to take the right decisions for optimization. So that's based on, uh, so the maturity audit is based on these uh, six pillars. Uh, as David mentioned, we used to do this with one-to-one uh, -one interviews, um, but now we, have, we created this kind of a more flexible uh, platform that we also can involve more and more people. And it's not only about this, this 2030, the stakeholders that are part, but today we, we are able to kind of interview uh, 100, 200 people. It, uh, it doesn't really matter. So we, uh, we have a small poll that, um, that you, we would like you to answer. And, and the question is quite simple. Um, and we really are curious uh, if, if you have already done a similar maturity assessment. 
uh, in your organization already? So it's a simple answer, yes, no. The poll uh, has been launched, so you can uh, answer it um, on the right side of, uh, of the screen and we'll come back to the, uh, to the results uh, in a minute. So applying this, uh, this, this maturity at, at Colorado Group, it, uh, it resulted back in 2014 in, the, in, in this simplified um, report where you can see definitely there is, it's, it's, it's not dramatical at all, uh, but you can also see that there is a definitely level of improvement that we can, uh, that we can apply on, uh, on the different areas. Um, on more strategic level, uh, the, the customer that was already at the center uh, in, in communication for Colored Group, but maybe a bit more um, offline and also a bit more per brand. So the cross brand aspect was a uh, was not not 100% uh, applied yet, but still it's um, it's it's kind of separate touch points that we needed to uh, to group together. Um, also there, yeah, we didn't really have the technology. Um, to enable this 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 view, so we uh, it was not a patchwork either. The technology there is a lot of technology already available, but this technology it's 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 still maybe a bit older legacy. The connection between the different um, types of technology was not there. The accessibility of data was not uh, was not really available. The connection between data sets. Uh, was was difficult. Uh, data was was pretty much sitting in silos, which is something that we uh, we obviously obviously see with a lot of other uh, customers. Um, and at that time, I would say that security, privacy was already a very hot item at Colorado Group. Um, but as a consequence, that that flexibility um, was not always there to connect uh, the dots. Data was sitting in silos, but also departments were were a bit sitting in silos. And uh, and actually, the analytics team was uh, yeah was the expert team, uh, but the skills were not embedded uh, with the different departments uh, at at the marketeers of the different brands, um, which was also leading to kind of uh, straightforward forward processes, but not flexible processes uh, at, at that time. And um, yeah, we were kind of really providing information but no insights to uh, to actions uh, also on that level on a, on a technology level um, back in 2014 we were still creating uh, dashboards in excel uh, uh, uploading them uh, manually uh, well putting in the data manually and i think everybody will remember uh, the days if you're uh, in analytics over uh, 10 years it was a it was still a lot of uh, of excel um we are with content based on KPI success factors that actually the analytics team decided on and not really the business owner. So that was then shared. Uh, it was sent by email. There was some, some information um, written uh, on there, uh, but that was it. So it was, it was a lot of prescriptive uh, analytics. So there are kind of, of key examples um, that, that we saw at that stage at the culture. It was, it, data was, was, was embedded in the culture, but again, a lot on, on the offline aspect and not really the, the online. So it was a lot about touch points where we where we see also in the past that that Colorado made some huge steps also in a, in the their publicity uh, brochures. It was it was already personalized, but that was not happening on an uh, on an online level uh, at that uh, stage. So you see, um, we took some steps, um, but there were steps to improve. And also what is important here is that we needed to make sure that this maturity level is also in balance. Uh, so it could be that, um, that on a level of strategy, you want to, uh, you want to reach the, the moon, but uh, if the technology is not there yet, then uh, you do, um, yeah, take a step back and maybe also on a strategic level, um, yeah, decrease a bit the ambitions. Um, I think the poll, uh, maybe it's time to take a look at the poll, Patrick, uh, to see the results. Yeah, I looked, uh, I looked at the results, as you heard, uh, we had eight responses, which is, uh, might not be statistically uh, significant, <laughs> but then we see 75% versus 25% uh, on yes. So a lot, of, most of the respondents actually didn't do a maturity assessment. So I think uh, there's definitely room for improvement. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, let's let's do another one, and, and please everybody uh, just a, a click on yes or no. But uh, we would like to know as well if if you haven't done an, a maturity assessment already. Um, yeah, do you think this is this is something you will be you will do on the on the short term uh, in within your organization? Okay, so we uh, we had this view in uh, in 2014 uh, of of these results, um, and based on these results, we then outlined kind of an uh, an action plan. Um, yeah, with with actions, clear actions on the short, mid, and long term, uh, and the main focus on, on strategic level is is kind of to support the customer centric uh, strategy um, to the best of our abilities. That's that's kind of the main driver for uh, for David's team. Um, to support this uh, customer-centric strategy. Now, the, the the roadmap that we outlined it's kind of based upon the culture and uh, strategy part. It's uh, on on collection and connection. It's on insights and action and on activation and impact. And these are kind of the four main areas. Uh, and within the scope of these areas, we have outlined the uh, the different actions. And then in the in the Rem remainder of this uh, presentation, we will go into examples of what we have, uh, of actions we have taken. Uh, and you will see, so we talk about 2014, we're 2020 today. Um, it took six years to, to grow uh, step by step, uh, but bear in mind that it, it's, again, it's a giant retailer, multi-branded with uh, quite a lot of legacy uh, systems uh, available as well. Can be faster for some organizations, but I think we uh, we all agree that in this context, it's uh, clear steps that we took uh, step by step, and also we kind of on a cultural level that was really important. We we took everybody uh, with us. Uh, the only thing I want to add as well is we did this in 2014, but uh, we repeated this maturity assessment every year. It's 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 not something that you uh, that we have done then and. And that's it. We there is a lot of uh, of, of things that can change. Uh, the, um, it's, it's the strategy, the overall strategy of Colored Group can change as well. There can be external impacts, and uh, take a look at uh, the COVID uh, impact today. Um, so again, that can have an impact, and and that's why it's important to at least once a year perform this maturity uh, assessment and see or if you're still uh, aligned uh, or not. Um, in your uh, approach. Patrick, I don't know if we have more than eight people uh, that responded to the yeah. next uh, <laughs> poll. Yeah, we doubled, Sigurd, we doubled. We're doing, right. good. We're doing good, both are increasing. Now, uh, um, we have 82% actually saying yes, that they're interested in uh, in performing our maturity assessment. We 18% saying no. Okay, great, great. But it's really at a, it's really a basis, and it's it it will also help uh, to to embed this culture of data driven organization as well. Eh? If you if you if you perform this assessment, if you share the results, uh, definitely and uh, and definitely take a look at at our free uh, platform uh, maturityminds.com where you can uh, where you can do such an uh, a maturity assessment for free. Now, as a, as, as a first step based on this uh, assessment that we did, is an, uh, it's more on a strategic level that we needed to ensure that all the business stakeholders uh, are aligned and, and focus on KPIs and success uh, factors that matter and that are also are aligned in the overall uh, strategy. So uh, we started kind of our, our roadshow, uh, our roadmap with the uh, KPI uh, workshops. With the uh, with the different brands, uh, and as we also saw from our assessment, that the level of maturity was was quite different between different brands, and also uh, some brands have bigger impact within the within the group or a bit more advanced, maybe also on, on digital. So we uh, we kind of started with the most uh, more important uh, brands, brands with a with a, a bigger impact. Um, but important here is that we create some consistency and unification in, in all these diverse uh, data sets uh, that we have. So we grouped kind of all the brands within a, within content focus, commerce focus, service focus, and of course a brand that is that has more a commerce focus, it will also um, yeah work on the on the content piece. It will also need to offer a very good service. So it's very much um, uh, aligned and it's very much integrated together. Um, the KPI frameworks that we that we kind of uh, defined based on uh, on these workshops actually are KPI frameworks that are 
used for every brand. And this uh, helps us to, to yeah, compare apples to apples, quite simple, create consistency, make it clear for everybody um, within the group uh, that these are the success factors and, uh, and, uh, and the KPIs to measure. So it's a, it's a very solid uh, framework that, uh, that, that yeah, helps us to focus on, uh, on really uh, what, what matters and, and the, the same definition of, uh, of success. So um, that was done in 2014. Uh, next year, on more technology level, um, we needed to we are we we created uh, consistency in KPIs and success factors, but also we needed uh, as a consequence as well of of our, our definition of, of of KPIs. We also needed to create some consistency now in uh, in a level of data that we collected and and, and that we reported on. So uh, on a technology level, I think the first step that we took was 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 move to an, a tech management system. Um, and actually the business case was really easy to make and uh, um, the ROI of a, of a tech management system was really, um, yeah, we, we won it back in six months. It's, 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 I think you know it, it's, it's time to implement, uh, it decreased to, um, from six weeks to six hours, the data quality improved, uh, it be became easier to test new solutions, to implement other solutions. Uh, Etc. Uh, I think a, a tech management system today is it's kind of a, a, a no-brainer. Um, in addition of this tech management uh, system, uh, you all know the concept of the data layer, um, and actually there we apply the same data layer for every um, kind of website, every mobile application. So for every brand, we apply uh, the same data layer. However. Uh, something that we already worked on quite hard uh, from the start was kind of this this process for collection, but also the process of of more efficient development on uh, on this data layer. So we came up with the with the yeah the the approach of a unified uh, data layer, universal data based on uh, on the U data uh, concept. Um, and actually, the slide you see here uh, at the bottom, you see the uh, the, the well, let's say more traditional tech management systems like uh, Adobe Launch, Telium IQ. Um, but what we did was kind of uh, created this this flow where it's easier kind of to uh, trigger events. It's easier to create additional data, um, and all the developments are actually done in this additional layer of universal data uh, before it's actually uh, sent to the tech management solution. And, uh, and send to the uh, to the the technology. I'm not going into details. If you want to know more, we can talk about it afterwards. But it's it's from the start, and that I want to emphasize that we really thought it through. Uh, and actually, applying this um, gives us now the opportunity to to work very flexible. And also, at a certain moment, if we want to change tech management solution, it's really easy because the data layer naming conventions, it's completely independent uh, of any vendor uh, at all. So on technology level, um, on the collection and connection, uh, so we have done the strategy with KPI workshops. Uh, we'd also had impact on the culture. On the technology level, we had the tech management system, the data layer consistency and flexibility here. Uh, and that also then as a next step, we moved from a more um, yeah, immature solution to an enterprise solution like Adobe Analytics. David? Yes. <laughs> so the big switch, uh, what Sigurd uh, just explained, yeah. So we had the basics right. Um, the data coming from these platforms was more and more unified. Um, we moved over then to Adobe Analytics because yeah, once the data gets correct and uh, brands get more mature, that's when the problems start. Um, they are more mature in the questions they are asking. So this free tool that was capturing the data, that was creating the reports, yeah, we started to get some issues. Um, complex questions that could not be answered, um, being insecure about the, the fact that is the, beta, the data correct, yes or no, sampling, excuse me, sampling. Um, so yeah, we needed to look into an enterprise solution. Uh, to be able to capture everything, even on a customer basis. Uh, so very, very granular data, uh, masses of data, 
and also at Colrad, around this time, we were thinking about big switch in uh, the loyalty card we had uh, in our main brand, Colrad Likes to Prize. We are moving over to a loyalty card that could be used in every single brand, meaning that we could connect all these days, data sets later on in single reports. So big switch happening, and uh, that's the year that we started working with Adobe Analytics. So what you see here in this slide is, yeah, we moved over from um, the, the basic analytics uh, set into uh, very basic uh, uh, reports, going over to standardized reports across brands, and then moving over to advanced. And even now, uh, we are moving over to innovative reporting, uh, which we'll come back to later on. Uh, so yeah. The flexibility of workspace was incredible for my team. Um, the fact that you could combine all these different uh, uh, dimensions, the metrics, etc., cetera, was, uh, was a big switch in, uh, in how my team worked and how we moved over to the next level <clears throat> of uh, analytics. So yeah, it took quite some time to start up. I have to be honest, uh, the, the switch from uh, from the free tool to Adobe Analytics was quite an eye opener. It was more difficult to work with because yeah, you have way bigger data sets. Um, so that was in two, 2017, uh, it was time to expand the team. Uh, not only in the amount of people, we were around uh, 10 or 11 people in my team, I think, uh, but also start to experiment. And uh, these are the first steps we took into uh, into the experimentation phase. Uh, so what were we experimenting with? We were experimenting with segmented personalization. So we had Adobe Analytics, but we also had Adobe Target, not only to, to do A-B testing, but using the customer segments that we had, uh, connecting them to Adobe Analytics, and just showing personalized um, banners on specific websites uh, to create a more relevant user experience on these platforms. And look into how does this affect the journey and uh, how does this affect the ROI? Um, also, what we did was cross-platform experiences. Um, we had the, the banners on uh, the different websites, but also if you look at the mobile website or an app, you're in a different state of mind at that point. So if we do these experiments, we separated them and looked into, yeah, is it relevant on that platform, yes or no, but it was all connected. It was very important for us to look at the different platforms that we used at that point. So basically we had two tools. We had knowledge from uh, the, the offline data, the customer segments, and it's, we already had the ability to look into the possibilities of working with these kind of connected data sources. Um, <clears throat> it took around yeah, uh, a year uh, to evolve to the next step, and uh, this was uh, also a big, uh, big change in the company. In 2018, um, we had uh, done everything we wanted to uh, that was on the roadmap. It was time to create a new roadmap in the, in the company. And uh, this was quite a big change. Uh, that's the point where uh, our uh, management decided to make digital analytics as a core service of the company. The years before, we were um, a sub um, a sub team of different departments. We were part of the web uh, development team. We were part of the strategical. Uh, the media strategical part of Colorado Group, and in 2018, yeah, um, our uh, big chiefs decided, yeah, this needs to be one core service available for the company, and you are able to expand. And that's also the point where we decided to take it more uh, a step further. Um, and that's also the year in 2018 that we needed to look into the data quality because we've done a lot, we've done a lot of experiments, but Sometimes you need to stop and look into the, your source data. Is it still correct? Is it still relevant? Are all the data points available that you need? Are we lacking on some points? Yes or no? Um, so we focused on that one to move on in 2019 to more data integration. 
connecting the different sources to be relevant to the different users. And one of the examples that I that I want to share with you is a uh, is a cool thing we've done with uh, with the different teams in the company. Um, it was for Corat Laagste Prijzen. They have an app, they have a website, they have a, a strategic roadmap on the digital part. But they had some questions. Uh, so when we talked to them, they they uh, told us that yeah, we have a roadmap uh, in the company for these specific things, but what features do appeal to what kind of user? Do we know this kind of stuff? Um, the personas that we created that will use these touch points, are these the ones using it at, at this point? And uh, uh, especially what questions could be answered? So the, the uh, unknown unknowns, as we call them, what is hidden in these data sets? And that's we, uh, when we decided to, uh, to do a test, so we downloaded the app data, the website data, and even the cash register data to combine these things. And the data science team worked on it. Our BI engineers uh, helped us out, digital analytics team, all together. Uh, we came up with, with a combination of these data sets and learned a lot. An example, they were, uh, there were more users than we expected that used the combination of these different things. Um, we had a better view of the segments that we're using these platforms. So the family typology, in example. Um, what features do appeal to certain to certain people or uh, certain family typologies? Um, could we make better predictions? So the data science team was getting a lot smarter with the inclusion of the digital data and combining it with everything we know from online, uh, offline behavior and also <laughs> A cool one was that the investment in this, this core, this data uniform, uh, uniformization, it really was needed to answer these questions. So the investment was uh, really worth it for the company. And this is also what I want to share with you is yeah, just taking the data sets and combining them, even if you don't have a DMP, a CDP, just start experimenting, just do stuff and just show the results of what could happen if you connect all these dots. Um, also, the possibilities go further than the thing we did for, uh, for Color at Laagste Prijzen. An example, could we link offline purchases to online activity and connect it to the, to the digital marketing channels, do ad suppression, or even uh, be more relevant, uh, create custom experience for people that uh, interacted with the all, uh, online or offline um, resulting in a better view of the attribution phase. And I know most of us analysts uh, get quite a few headaches of uh, attribution, how you should uh, work with that kind, of, uh, that kind of stuff. But it helps to get a better view what, what touch points are, uh, in fact, giving pluses in the results, yes or no. So yeah, that was uh, the thing for uh, Colorad we did. And that's when uh, Sigurd, I think you'll take uh, this uh, slide. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Uh, it's a lot of insights that we created, and now we are actually at the point also to take to take action. So we we have the digital touch touch points. We have uh, created our, our environment to create our, our segments or our audiences, etc. We enrich it with uh, with other data sources, and then what we see, uh, not only at Colorado but also on a, uh, in the market, is it, it's it's time really to to create this. This unique uh, customer experience on all on all channels. Uh, with Colera today, we we work with uh, on kind of the, the 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 owned digital platforms, and then on the other hand, it's uh, it's about um, yeah, it's about uh, advertising on uh, on on outside networks, uh, and all the insights that we get here are also sent back then to the to the digital touch points and uh, and used again to improve and uh, and actually. Here we took the first step on a segmentation level uh, towards an, a one-to-one -one communication to all uh, customers. Yeah, this brings us to 2020 uh, and moving forward. Um, I can share with you that as a company, we, uh, we have more than 180 people just in the data department. And we strongly believe that you should work in an integrated service kind of mindset it's not about digital or offline anymore. It's about data and customer relevancy. 
So everything that we create now is created just to um, bring integrated services to the different brands. Uh, unified dashboarding, et cetera, uh, predictive models that are uh, fed by the different types of data. Uh, so yeah, we, we uh, look forward to the, to the coming years to be able to get uh, smarter um, in, in the current uh, state that we are in. And uh, I'm also happy that I see this slide uh, Sigurd has pushed. Um, the fact that we are balanced now on the different pillars in the maturity makes us a lot more efficient to work with uh, these different things. And uh, Sigurd, I don't know if you want to add some more about no, the, we, uh, uh, the latest results. Yeah, just as a wrap up and to show you that we really have evolved. Uh, this is the current situ situation on a, on a strategic level, as I mentioned before. It's, uh, we, we are very much aligned now, 100% aligned. There's still some 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 actions to take on uh, on on yeah integrating data sets uh, on on using the data even uh, even better. Uh, on a on a on I think we are very happy that on a cultural level we took a lot of steps. We we did a lot of efforts in awareness campaigns, sharing success cases, sharing dashboards, making it also more accessible. But also uh, from the tops. Uh, Management, uh, there was a clear message that we need to, uh, or that all that group needs to become really insight driven. So that obviously, uh, obviously helped. Uh, David's team is now also integrated in the in the BI team, which which gives again uh, new opportunities to um, to do better things with data. So it's a kind of uh, a good uh, move forward, I think. And still, uh, it's a never ending story, of course. So we'll always have uh, options to. Uh, to uh, improve, um, so that's that's kind of the ending of, of our story. Uh, as a wrap up, uh, Patrick, um, we have some key takeaways that we uh, we want you to take from this uh, story. Uh, I see that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Yeah, let's let's quickly look at some key takeaways and then we wrap up for questions. So primarily, obviously, is look into your maturity and define your own roadmap. Really look at where you are and also. Uh, perhaps uh, liaise with Multiminds in this one. They've done this exercise before. So I think that's, a, that's a, a good key takeaway. Then the second one is look at your data quality and make sure that that's, uh, that's, that is key for your future activities, not only in the consistency, but also in the way if it's still relevant. I think that David brought up a very good point there that really continuously look at your data to make sure that the quality, the data that you're using is actually relevant for your activities. And then the third point, and lastly, I think the, mo the most promising one is combining your data sets to get a holistic view of your uh, customer journeys and also bringing these data sets together, really to get, uh, to get the full picture. And with that, I would like to open it for questions. Lene? Yes, yeah, thank you very much for, um, for all you've shared today. Um, there's one question that I would like to um, bring up here, and I think, Either Sigurd or David, feel free to, to answer this one. Um, regarding the six pillars of the maturity assessment that you talked about, do you feel that one pillar is more important than another one? And from your experience, what is the most challenging pillar to optimize? Um, definitely, there is not one pillar that's more important than the, than the other one. As I said, you need to be in balance on, on each pillar um, and you can have the best technology in place, but uh, if your strategy is not clear, if you if your culture is not there, if you don't get support from from top management, uh, yeah, you can't do anything. And the other way around, the same thing. Uh, if your technology uh, sucks, then uh, it's it's still an enabler. It's still important in this in this kind of um, analytics and, and 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 optimization flow to have good technology. So. Every pillar here has a, has is it's important. So it's um, but what we see is that that yeah probably in in my experience I think that the most difficult um, steps to take is on a governance level. If you don't get support from from your top management, it's really hard to take the next steps. So um, if we see that that might be an issue in a company, then really we need to make sure that that we are aligned on that level that we have top management. Uh, back us up um, and, and spread also the word of the importance here. Yeah, 
Thank you very much for answering this one. There's one more question, uh, and I know we're we're at time, so there's one more question that I would um uh, like to uh, bring up. Uh, Stefan asks, how did Coolright, and I think this is one for David, how did Coolright get ROI for a data scientist team? Was it based on projects, and which project does data scientist work for? <clears throat> um, ROI for a data science team? Um, yeah, we, we just have a, a huge team at Colorado. Um We don't question the fact that we that we need them. So, uh, um, yeah, the data science team is working on, on uh, the different uh, modeling, um, building models, um, machine learning, etc. So uh, it's usually project based, but also yeah, just the needs of the different brands that they are working on. You want a predictive yeah. model to uh, optimize something? These are the guys to talk to, and uh, and uh, we are one of the teams providing them with with cool data sets to to work with. So it's it's a combination of both, project based, but also just the needs that are currently uh, there at the different uh, brands. And I hope this Makes answers sense. your question. <laughs> I hope so too. So Stefan, I hope it answers your question. Um, with this, I would like to um, uh, end this webcast. So um, I would like to thank the presenters and their audience for your attention and your questions. Our next session is on November 17th, where we will host Telenet together with our partner, Lead Fabric. If you have any further questions about the session today, please feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, we'd love to have you join again and have a great day.